Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan, and I'm here in the island of Bohol in the Philippines. Uh, it's been interesting here the last maybe three weeks or so. We've had two huge typhoons go north of us, so we've had rain on and off every day for the last three, three and a half weeks. I haven't seen the stars or the moon for I can't tell you how long. I thought I'd come down and make a fire for you to show you uh, how to how I do it at, under different conditions like this here. It's, it's extra damp. Um, I walked around the yard for about maybe three minutes and I picked up the supplies for fire, I guess. We'll see how they work. I have some coconut netting that's damp. I have one piece of wood here and, and a couple pieces of dead wood here that I'm going to use for the fire lay. And I have my uh, ultimate bolo with the additional knife on there, the old hickory. I also brought down a, a, a more knife to play with and uh, I'm going to show you what I want to do for a fire. Be right back. Alright, I got a nice little pile of firewood there. It's real spalted and semi-rotted. It's not quite punk wood yet, but it's in the ballpark. Pretty decent pieces here. I use those as regular fuel wood. Pretty big ones there. And I'll just take this other wood here and just kind of sprinkle it around. I'll see the chips if I can find them. I like having nice long thin pieces that I can run off the sides and stuff. I don't have that today. The stuff all just kind of chipped up into little chunks because it's so rotted. Okay. I always go for my bridges out like here and Kind of make a teepee out of it on top of here. I want the top of the fire lay to be supported by the, the bridges in case I want to lift one side up or something. Okay, now that looks like a lot of wood there to a lot of people. And here it's not so much because it, here it doesn't burn into coals, it just burns into ashes. Okay, now I'm going to try something new here. I have some K-Pox fiber. Which is this stuff here. And K-Pox really sucks to work with when you're all sweaty. It just, it just covers you. But nothing I can do about that right now. And I'm going to take some of this. And it's just, it's, it's beyond... Fluffy. It's a real slippery feeling, like it's almost like graphite or something. And I'm just going to put some of that down here. Stick it in between the bridges. See, it's just sticking to me like crazy. But the fluffier you have it, the, the better it'll flash. It, it doesn't really. Um, burn slow like when cotton starts up. This just kind of flashes. This is a flash tender is what I call it. And I'm going to use that specifically to just get the tender going. That's the object of it. <laughs> it's all over me now. See how it just clings to me? 
like the wolf man. I don't know if it's quite fluffy enough down here or not, but we'll give it a try once. Okay, then all I'm going to use is, I'm going to use my cheapest ferro rod. What did I do with it? Right here. I've got this little one right here. This is a eBay special, $2. It's about three inches long. It's got a pretty good diameter on it and has a halfway decent sparker on it, striker on it. And it throws a, throws a fair spark. So all I'm gonna do is give it a shot here. We'll see what we have. And oh, it's Friday. Happy Friday, guys. See how it just flashes? Now the beauty of the double lay, the, the double bridge fire lay is it's getting a little bit of air up through the bottom. See? And if, if it started to kind of choke out, I would just lift one side up and that would usually put plenty of air through the bottom if there was a slight little breeze or something like that. But very rarely with a, a double bridge will you have to blow on it or do anything to it. You know, usually once the tinder catches, it burns up through the, the, the pencil size and then into the fire, into the fuel wood. The tinder is not burning very good though. You can see it's real damp. It's struggling. The wet pieces of bamboo, no, that actually burned. I'm really surprised about that. Now it's starting to go a little bit. Another good thing about a fire lay like this too is you get it all built up like this and if your wood is a little damp on the top as it burns you know, up through it, it gives it a chance to dry also. So Now my little support sticks just burned through you see that it dropped down, that's not good. Still burning fair though. The regular firewood I have here isn't burning the best, it's pretty damp. Some is burning though. It's starting to take off now. But you see I haven't blown on it at all, nothing like that. And if you had a slight little breeze, let me tell you, this fire, this fire lay is absolutely perfect. Sorry for walking in front of the camera, guys. Here's some old soaking wet pieces of bamboo here. They'll dry out by the time they get a chance. It's not burning in the front like I'd like it to, but it's still burning good in the back. That's a fire though. Guarantee you. That would keep us going tonight. No trouble at all. What do you think, guys? I call that a success, 100% success. And what I started it with is this K POC stuff. <laughs> all right, well, I guess that's all I've got for you for today. Happy Friday. And, uh,.
Everybody get outside, have some fun, and by all means, be safe. See you later. I'm going to build my fire here in my little fire pit area alongside the hill, just for safety reasons, even though everything's damp. Uh, if you look at it close, you can see everything in there is just muddy ash, real damp. And I have, for wood, I have one, one log here I picked up. And a couple pieces of, of uh, mango from a tree we, tree we knocked down the other day. I'm going to use that for the bridge. And uh, I have a little bit of coconut netting here that I'm going to use as my tinder. And then I'm going to start the fire with something different today. I'm going to use some uh, kapok fiber and see how that works. All right. Well, let's get started here. I'm going to move over to the log here. Let's see if we're straight. Okay. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the start on the fire lay make sure that has some start to it. Uh, I have a big piece of rotten mango and this I'm just going to cut in half I think of it. It will cut. Got mosquitoes buzzing my ears. It's almost rotten but it's still pretty tough. I would have been through by now. About four inches though. There we go. See it's kind of spalted inside. That's what I'm going to use for my uh, bridges in the fire. A little big. That's what I'd use if I was out camping though. It'd be perfect. A little big for the fire pit. So my Firewood is going to be this piece of Benunga, which is a pretty good wood. I'm just going to, I could use my saw, probably be easier. You can see this is a different type of wood though, it's not, not near as solid. Now for firewood and stuff, you know, why take another 10 wax at it? Just snap it off. This is what I like to make my bowl drill sets out of. This is a perfect piece here. I don't know if it's, it's probably too, probably too rotted for a bowl drill. Too small to but good. Check what's. No, I think that would make a beautiful, that'd make a beautiful uh, bowl drill set. Save that maybe. And for this right here, can you see that? Yeah. Now, a lot of guys would just take their, th their, their bolo and just chop on this. I don't really like doing that because if you miss, you're messed up. Let me tell you. Better just to take a baton and Whack through real quick. Just takes a second. I also have a piece of fire, uh, fat wood I have here. It's been sitting in a tin of water for weeks now. Maybe we'll try that later. See what that'll do. See if that ever saturates completely. See, this is pretty spalted up though. That, that end piece there was pretty good though. It'll burn great, but there's a there's a limit to how rotten it can be for a hearth board and a spindle. See how it's getting black inside? That's the spalting. Beautiful wood though. If you cut that down, you can make something kind of cool looking out of it. Let's try the bigger one here.
and I have my baton, so I just tap it down. This binuka, now this is a junk wood here. They don't use it for anything. They don't even use it for firewood here in the Philippines. I I use it for my bow drills and uh, it makes a fair fair camp wood, I guess. You can you can and you can and you can hear by the way it's splitting. It's kind of kind of dead inside, getting getting to the point of being rotten. Not like a piece of oak that'll just you know kind of spring apart. Has a big pith core in the center of it. That's also another good tinder right there. That'll usually take a very nice spark. Pretty good little pieces there. Now we'll split all those up into smaller pieces. Let me stop sweating for a second. I'll get right back with you. All right, I'm going to split down this little piece of bamboo I have here. It's kind of damp, but I don't want it to burn. I want it for um, supports across my fire lay. Just need like six of six little pieces. What I really need. The thinner, the better. That should be fine. I just want them big enough to go across the the bridges and hold up like a, some of the tinder. That's the secret. It's too thin to split. Turn over to the fire lay ones. Okay, I've got my two logs in the fire pit. Again, they're a little too big around. Half that size would be perfect. But all I really want to do is I want to make sure I just have some thin pieces to hold up the tender. something like that okay then for the tinder what I have is I have some of this coconut netting stuff here this is one of my best um, tinders I can get here even after rain it's usually halfway dry rain last night hard it's not too bad get it as fluffy as you can of course I'm just gonna kind of lay a blanket of that across the thinner stuff's better. This stuff's kind of thick, but it's all I could find today. It was a nice piece there, nice and fluffy. I'm kind of jumping around in the sequence here a little bit for you guys, but I still have to get firewood yet. Once that gets going, it goes great. Another great tinder here is banana leaves, but this they're they're too wet right now. But the fluffier your tinder is, the better off you're gonna be. And this is I'm using different materials than you're gonna use back home, but use the same techniques here put a bridge up just like this with stuff across your bridge put your grass your dry grass where I'm putting the coconut fibers at and I guarantee you when you see this fire start no matter even how damp it is here today I'd, I'd almost bet money that I don't have to blow on it or do anything to it and back home you're always gonna have a breeze somewhere and you'd make sure that this part of the the front of the the lay is facing the breeze so you get a little bit of air underneath it. Here I have zero breeze. It's just completely dead here. But the secret with this fire lay is to make your entire fire before you even think about throwing a spark with your ferro rod. 
Alright, so I got a ton of tinder on here. You don't want it too thick, you want it still be air to go through it, of course. Just kind of fluffing it on. That might be too thick, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, then the next after that would probably be. I don't, let's go see how, how, how dry everything is over here. Over here I have some um, brush that was grown in the yard that died over the drought here. These are kind of like tropical garden plants. Are they good enough to burn here? I don't know. Yeah, they're kind of cracking, so I'll put some of these on top of the on top of the tinder. Small so I can get here. Just to help get the fire going. That might be enough. Save some for later, I guess. Pretty small stuff though, smaller than pencils. Okay, let's go back to the fire, I guess. This will make the firewood end of it a lot easier. I want it to make it so small and go more for pencil size stuff. But again, I'm just going to sprinkle it around. Oh, I just got a big whiff here coming up out of the the bottom lands, I got a real skunky smell that could meet a, mean a civet cat's in the area. They're pretty interesting. Got a big round tail on them. It's about our wildest animal we have here. All right. So then on top of that, I need to put some firewood. I'm going to need to, for sure, split this up more. I'm going to work on that for a couple minutes, I guess. And again, I'm just going to keep using the same bolo knife. It, it's pretty practical most of the time. It's good for taking splinters off too and chips off. I'm going to need the firewood a little, a little thinner than that though, I can tell you right now. This all depends on how it all splits, but stuff like that might be okay. more what I need right there. Some chips. Kind of like I'm making a fireboard almost. Thinner the better to get started. And it is very damp here. It's 100% humidity today. We had rain late last night. And it's probably 90 degrees here, be my guess. I'm just pouring out sweat, but I sweat all the time anyway, but today it's extremely thick. There it is. I got some girl singing, singing hymns up above me. If you guys can hear that in the background or not, that's my wife up there. She's hosing off the patios. I'm just in the my personal space area. Always be careful if you're working with a big knife. Now, see, you could do this with a hatchet, 
but it's I don't it's just not near as easy I just really enjoy the the, the thin now with a hatchet you can put a hatchet down like that and hold on to it and then just tap it down like that that works pretty good real safe How about I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you guys when I get this pile split up. I won't waste all your time.